away the IRL champion. His 16th career was Grand National start. Just joined this team a year ago. This could be his first win. Look at this. He gives him a little. He's got him. He's got him. He's got him. He's going to get him. He's going to get him. He's going to get him. Matt Jensen wins. He got him. Straight away. He got him. Matt Jensen for Robbie Reiser's team with no sponsor on the back quarter panel other than a Thank you to Lycos for last week. He takes his first yes. Grand National victory. What a race. Today, Matt Kenseth and a host of young guns try to grab a piece of the rock. Last weekend at Daytona, the youngest of the young guns, defending rookie of the year, Andy Santer, slides into Michael Waltrip. Santer's injured, yields the driving chores to Mike Swain Jr. Then the defending series champion, Dale Earnhardt Jr., involved in that massive melee. And later in the day, with a checkered flag in sight, Andy Himmenberg underneath Casey Atwood. Atwood goes flying, and with everybody talking about the young guns, it became Veterans Day. The old man, Randy LaJoy, got the win. And here at Rockingham today, a bright sunny day, and two of those young guns right up on the front row. Dale Earnhardt Jr. will start first. Matt Kenson is on the outside. But they didn't qualify there. In fact, nobody in this field qualified. Yesterday at the Rock, it was a cold, dreary, wet, rainy day. Qualifying was washed out. So what they had to do, start the cars in today's race by the point standings from last year. And what that's done, it's put some really young, inexperienced drivers right up at the front of the pack. One of those, this guy right here, Tony Raines, he's starting fourth. He's never had a lap of competition on this racetrack. Tony, what are those first few laps going to be like, man? Well, it'd probably be like uh, sink or swim, you know, we're going to have to do it. The car wasn't too bad in practice and uh, got some good cars to follow, so try and stay clean and let this thing settle in. Well, he's had lots of experience. He's a winner from the truck series. But you know, there's about four or five other young drivers on back in the field in the top 20 who have relatively no experience on this racetrack. This is going to be interesting. That lack of qualifying sent a lot of good cars home, including this one of Adam Petty. There is nothing you can do when you don't even have a shot to qualify. Nobody can give you any tips when you don't even have a chance to run. And that hurt another driver, Glenn Allen Jr., 11th in Bush points in 1998. But Glenn switched to a new team in 1999, and that's really going to cost you because now the lack of points you get here from today at the end of the year could really make a difference in where you finish in the point standings, correct? Yeah, really. I mean, it was tough because we were lined up to qualify. We had a great car yesterday. The Barbasol Ford Tourist was really good, and it's just disappointing to be 11th and run all the races last year to come with a new team here and uh, to miss it on behalf of the weather. But uh, the guys are working hard. We're excited about going to Las Vegas in a couple weeks. So we're just going to root Elton on here today in the uh, Lysol Ford and uh, see what happens. Ralph, like Glenn said, weather the big factor here yesterday. Two hours of practice only before qualifying was washed out. These guys really didn't get to work on race setup, qualifying only. That could be a big factor with a lot of new teams with a lot of new drivers. But rumor has it, man, Matt Kenseth, Jeff Burton, their teams did watch the weather a little closer than others. They did make some long runs in that practice. So I think that could pay off for them here today. The business world has the Donald. The racing world has the Mark. Mark Martin, 34 wins in the NASCAR Bush Series dating back to 1982. But for the Mark to make his mark here today, he'll have to do it from a 30-second starting spot in the Altel 200. Conditions far different than yesterday. A lot of the folks who said, well, let's wait and see what Mother Nature has in store before we buy tickets. Well, they have just shown up. That is the main ticket office here at the Speedway. And you can see the lines are seemingly hundreds of people deep as everybody waits to join us for the Alltel 200. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Eli Gold. Welcome to the start of TNN's coverage of NASCAR in 1999. Yeah, yesterday was a total washout, but the story goes even more deeply than just how the qualifying did not go. 
because yes, there are point standings to lean back on. Johnny Benson's in the field as a former series champion. Others got in by the luck of the draw as to when they returned their postmarked entry blank for today's race. So yes, it is an interesting mix of field today. The drivers, the young, the old, the experienced, and those who are not so experienced. We have some experience up here alongside me, though. Uh, Winston Cup champion, 13 times a winner in the NASCAR Busch Series, Darrell Waltrip, and of course, Buddy Baker, a Hall of Famer alongside as well. And Buddy, when you talk about this day, inexperience, pitting on both sides of the racetrack, I mean, the storylines go on and on and on. Well, they do, and just as Glenn was talking about, I mean, Tony Raines, Kerry Earnhardt, J.D. Gibbs, all these guys are going into uncharted waters. Long runs here. The only way to get experience is to go out there, run long runs, set your car, but they do have one ace in the hole. They have teams that have been here and run long runs before. How much does that help, though, Darrell, when a guy like Raines, yes, he has base motorsports and Steve Bird, but how much can that translate to the driver's seat? Well, it, it really doesn't. I mean, the car will be okay, and that's that's important to the driver, but the driver has to learn the track and the conditions. And uh, Every 10 laps, you're going to lose uh, three or four tenths of a second around the racetrack, so tires are going to go off, and that's going to make the car handle hard, harder and harder to handle. Inexperienced drivers get in trouble pretty quick in conditions like that, but speaking of conditions, it is a beautiful day. Mm -hmm. The rain did wash all the oil and sand and dirt off the racetrack, so Grip is at a premium right now, so it could be a, we might be surprised at how well it goes. And of course, DW knows because he's already been out today for practice. He is qualified for tomorrow's event, so when he tells you what the track is doing, you can take that to the bank. And the other thing, tire wear. I mean, how long does it take for the tires to go away? For the inexperienced driver that's never felt the tires go away here, that's very, very important. Yeah. All of those stories, well, I guess, will unfold as quickly as maybe five or six laps. Oh, yeah. Well, the thing about it is tire management. You know, the more things uh, change here, the more they stay the same. Yeah. Tire management's the deal, and you got Mark and Jeff Burton and some of those experienced guys in the back. They understand the tire situation. They've been here a dozen times. They know what to do. And the younger guy, he might get out there and just drive the wheels off his car, and the next thing you know, he's loose, maybe even into a crash. So uh, that's where the guys, even though they're starting way back, they'll work their way to the front. Mark just feels like, I just made a stop and nobody else did. <laughs> Good point. We've got lots to talk about. We're going to hold the start of the race up a few moments to allow all those fans you saw at the ticket office to make their way into the grandstands. When we come back, we'll check out the starting lineup and a whole lot more. We're live at The Rock. Just a few seconds away from firing the engines for the Alltel 200. 197 laps around this track. That is 1.017 miles around. There the field awaits the command to fire the engines. It has just now been given as we check in quickly with Ralph Shaheen. Eli, as you know, fitting on the backstretch here at Rockingham is anything but an advantage. And there's quite a few cars that have they had qualifying might be pitted on the front stretch, but today they'll be pitting on the backstretch. Drivers like Johnny Benson, the former series champion, Dave Blaney, Mark Martin will be back here, and Mike Stefanik, just to name a few, including Kevin LePage. Certainly great to have Ralph Shaheen back with us on our NASCAR coverage here on TNN. Welcome aboard as you check out the AutoZone prep for the race. There you see the race record. Now, why has Ford dominated here? Is there something in the powertrain of the engine? <laughs> Mark Martin drives a Ford. There you go. I can think of. <laughs> <laughs> Put him in a Chevrolet might be a different story. Plain and simple right there. And there you see the 197 laps that makes up today's race. As soon as we come back, we'll check out the starting lineup. We'll also look at some of the new paint schemes for 1999. All of that as TNN returns to the rock in a moment. Everybody, a super crowd on what's turned out to be a beautiful day after the awful weather of yesterday. Just up the road in Charlotte, they had a good bit of snow. But we are set to go racing. And let's check out the starting lineup for today's all Tell 200. There you see, by order of points from last year's car owners. Earnhardt Jr., Kenseth, McLaughlin. Now remember Reigns, the 74 car, was driven by Randy LaJoy. That's why Reigns starts up there in fourth spot. Elton Sawyer, Phil Parsons, Kerry Earnhardt in on that 40 channel lock car that had points from Kevin LePage last year. Yeah, we've seen that car run awfully well here. You know, LePage uh, set on front, uh, may have even set on pole here last race and uh, led quite a bit of the race early on. And Casey Atwood there in the 27. What a great run last week. Got wrecked right near the end of the race. Oh, man, I hated that. He was doing such a great job. He's a good kid, and I look for great things out of him even today. 
Mike Dillon in the field. Good to see Chuck Bound back with the Hensleys again. Jeff and Kubert in the bunch down there in Virginia. Yeah, they had a good bit of success together, and that could work out good for them again. Now, all of these teams getting in again by virtue of points from a year ago. You saw Mike Swain Jr. subbing for the injured Andy Santer. Now, from 34th spot on back, well, 34th, Johnny Benson. He is the 1995 Bush Series champion. He got under the past champions provisional. Then everybody behind him, all of these fellas, including a new face to you, maybe, Andy Kirby from Nashville, Bobby Hamilton Jr., all of those fellas got in as to when their entry blank was postmarked and sent back to NASCAR. Hey, listen, we got great postal service in the Nashville area, and I think that proves <laughs> it right there. <laughs> Postman. Now, those who did not qualify, or actually did not make the cut, Glenn Allen, 11th in points last year, Boy. as you heard Ralph say, but with a different team. The Green Brothers, Jimmy Kitchens with no points for Bobby Allison's team. Bobby Labonte, not wow. with that same team anymore, and, <laughs> yeah. and hence uh, things have changed. There you see Mike Skinner, Dick Trickle also. Philip Morris. Remember how great he yeah. ran here in the fall race? Fifth finished here. fifth and yeah. uh, had a great run here and he had to go home. I, I, that's a tough deal when Mother Nature deals you a hand like that. Yeah, Ryan Adam, Wall. Adam Petty there. You know, sixth place last week in Daytona. That was yeah. like winning for him. Oh, yeah. He and uh, he and Casey both were just right up there at the end of the day and I was just, I was so excited for him. That was fun to watch. So all of those fellas uh, regretfully uh, not able to make it. Many are already home watching our coverage. Also do want to say hello to Andy Santer. Got banged up in the race and the accident we showed you earlier with Michael Waltrip uh, last week. Andy has yielded the driving chores during his recovery to Mike Swain Jr., who graduates from the uh, Goodies Dash series of NASCAR. And uh, we wish Mike the best in a speedy recovery for Andy. Yeah, Mike Swain was one of the quickest cars in practice yesterday, so he really adapted to the racetrack very fast. And uh, I look for good things out of him. Yeah, it's a good race car, and, uh, and he's a good driver, and I think uh, that could work out well. We've got Dave Blaney carrying some onboard cameras for us here today. What did they do yesterday, last week? About four and a half seconds into the race when the engine went bye-bye. Yeah. So yeah. this is really the start of the season for that bunch. We've got cameras on board with Mark Martin, who, remember now, is starting in 32nd. You've got Jeff Burton back in 30th. We'll watch their progression through the field. Randy LaJoy, who won at Daytona a week ago. Bob Evans Restaurants, the brand new full season sponsor announced here yesterday on board that team uh, car for James Finch's bunch. Kerry Earnhardt, I'll be interested to see Kerry keep his cool starting near the front with limited experience. Yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be tough. And of course, Phil Parsons, as has been the case over the last few seasons, always carrying our onboard cameras. Boy, a horrendous wreck last week when uh, Ron Hornaday veered. We're getting the green. We'll talk about that later. Johnny Norton is the flag man this year for the Bush Series, backed up by Jimmy Howell. And as they stack it up right here, Ed Barrier has problems among many others. Good bit of evasive driving by Lyndon Amick to go to the inside. There's the Dr. Pepper number 50 for Mark Green. And DW, you said to us before, <laughs> as we watched Earnhardt Jr. go for the lead inside of Kenseth, you said it'll be lucky to get through the first lap clean. Yeah, well, the thing is, the tires are all new. And uh, what we found in qualifying on our cars was they would uh, break traction real easy until you got a little heat in them. Matt Kenseth looking on the inside as they rock it off turn two and down the back straightaway. They're side by side going into turn three. Yeah, I think this is uh, shades of things to come, folks. These two cats here are going to go at it all year long, just like this. Definitely so. Here comes Mike McLaughlin also in the 34. As you can tell, obviously, everybody pulled away from that first uh, lap. Half, uh, I don't know if an accident. It's the jam up. Yeah. And uh, hence, there is no caution, clearly. Elton Sawyer there in, in uh, fourth place right now, making an early move in the 98 car also. Yeah, it's good for Elton to start up there because he has a little trouble qualifying a lot of times, but he always finds himself there at the end, so I'm sure this is a big plus for him. And back in the field, there's some cats moving, too. Again, here's what happened at the start. Another quick look for you. Oh, you just see a couple of cars that uh, kind of not go when they should or break traction or whatever. Ed Barrier in 77 there goes around, but no contact, and he's back underway. 
Here now the battle for second. McLaughlin in the 34. Dale Earnhardt Jr., the defending series champion in the three. Eli, the Earnhardt Jr. had gone to the high side of the racetrack and apparently it's not, there's not a good group up there yet. So he, he lost momentum, so he moved to the bottom of McLaughlin. Now he seems to have the measure on him. That right, what you're watching is turns one and two, bank 22 degrees. Where they're heading now, turns three and four, bank 25 degrees. Darrell, other than the obvious numerical difference, is there a difference in the end of the speedway at how you drive it? It's a huge difference. Uh, you really pinch it hard into turn one, and uh, the turn just runs out real quickly as you come out of turn two over there. You almost hit the wall every time you exit turn two. Three and four is much more forgiving. You're running into the D here in the front straightaway, and the car can fade out a little bit, and you can still control it. There you see now Jeff Purvis making the move to grab eighth away from Kerry Earnhardt. Purvis in the four. Kerry Earnhardt, that blue and red number 40 with whom we're riding right now. Yeah, just behind these two cars, uh, I see Larry Pearson moving in in the double zero there. And let me tell you something. Larry Pearson is probably as pumped <laughs> as I have ever... He was showing me, we were talking about the nice championship ring he had in his hand the other day. He said, I got another one of these at home. He's a two-time champion, of course, in this series. He said, I'm going to get myself another one this year. So I'm going to win five or six races. And you guys know Larry Pearson as well as I. Uh, he is not the boastful, bragging sort. A, a lot like his dad, David Pearson. He would do his talking on the racetrack. I was going to say, David would be talking to that boy if he keeps talking like that. <laughs> <laughs> They see Pierce in the double zero, Casey Atwood in the 27. The 28 behind them was Andy Kirby, and there is Mark Martin. And Ralph, he's up to 20th already. Eli, he's doing just like any good running back would do in the NFL. He's following his lead blocker, and right now that lead blocker is Jeff Burton. Buddy Barrett, Burton's crew chief, is over here on the back stretch in Mark Martin's pits. They've been talking back and forth with their drivers and said, Mark, stay right with him. He's going to take you to the front. And that's exactly what they've been doing. We also saw a swap around for the lead. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the three reassumes the top spot at lap number eight. As the folks from Duralube will again this year bring you the aerial views of the racetracks that TNN visits. Earnhardt Jr. has one great thing going for him. Not only can he drive a race car, but everybody that pulls for his father on Sunday pulls for him on Saturday. The grandstand just erupted as he took the lead. Man's got talent going for him, too. Yeah, he really does. Yeah. And, uh, he got a, he got, he's kind of like the Jeff Gordon of the Bush Series right now. Got the right car, got the right crew, and he's doing an exceptionally good job as a young driver. He may not think that's a compliment. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Come to think of it. <laughs> Matt Kenseth, though, he, he's able to move right back on the deck lid there of Earnhardt Jr. as they go down and turn three over there. But look at McLaughlin. Now, under the white line here, here we have a change for the lead. Yeah, I think the thing about the, the 17 car was he just, I, wanted, I think he wanted to size up the three, see if he had anything, because it's a shrewd guy that drives that 17 car, Kenseth. I like him. Remember when he won here last year, we showed you the highlight earlier as McLaughlin grabbed second. Kenseth was calm, too. He started way back in 27th, as you may remember a year ago, and came on to get the win. Let's check in with Glenn Jarrett. Uh, DW, you hit it right on the nose when Earnhardt took the lead a few laps ago from Kenseth. Matt just simply pulled over after he crossed the start finish line and let Dale Jr. go ahead, and I think you're exactly right. He wanted to see exactly what he had, and he realized that he was a little bit quicker right now. Also, you know, they're seeing which weather cars work the best uh, in traffic in line, and they've got to take care of those tires. You talked about that at the top of the show. That is of the utmost importance, tire management. And, of course, handling is very much a factor. It goes hand-in-hand hand with, with tire management. A lot of the guys who are not necessarily dialed in, look at Ted Musgrave, that white car out near, coming to you right now, number 29. He has lost a ton of positions in the last two miles. Just can't get back down low on the racetrack, and the world has bypassed him, as Mark Martin and Todd Bodine are doing right now. Yeah, that's what happens. Uh, there is no upper groove at this point. There will be before this race is over with. But right now, it's a little hard sledding out there. Todd Bodine is built like Cale Yarborough. He's made for this type of racetrack. As yeah. a matter of fact, at Dover and, and Rockin' Hill. Oh, trouble, trouble, trouble. Chuck Bound. Chuck Bound breaks loose. No Spins. caution. No caution. Now caution is coming out. You heard the spotter say there was no caution. And seconds later, NASCAR said, put it out. And we are under caution. 
for the very first time. Tough break for old Chuck Trouble Bound. On the back Trouble on the away. back straightaway now as cars tangle along the inside. That's Shane Hall. You see the 43 on his route. 40, 25, 30, right in that area. Now the chase and Jared also involved in that over there. They make contact on the back straightaway in the 33 car. In the 43 Shane Hall. So uh, I don't know what happened there. I didn't see it. No, to be very honest, we were all looking at Chuck's situation. <laughs> yeah. Chuck then, was in good shape. He didn't yeah. hit anything. Chuck Bound, former series champion with the Hensleys, as we mentioned earlier, and back with them. And he's had four rays into the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. You're happy to see he's had injuries over the years, got banged up badly at Pocono, you might remember. Nice to see him get another lease on his racing life. Yeah, and, and he didn't hit anything. The car should be okay. He can come in, get him some new tires, and try it again. Let's go back and see who we can uh, zero in on. I think he got a little... Ah, yeah, oh. Dave Blaney with a little help. Yeah, he got a little help. Yeah. A little help from a friend there. He didn't, maybe he doesn't like Tigers. <laughs> look ah. at the 26. Look at Johnny Benson <laughs> just getting by. Woo. And on the back stretch, well, there you see what happened. I don't know what Tough happened Tough to tell there. exactly. There you see Shane Hall yeah. to the uh, low side. I'm yeah. thinking that somebody hollered caution and, that, and uh, they slowed down. And that's Wayne Grubb going by outside wall. I'm sure it's probably but one of those chain But you can see reactions. Jason Jarrett also yeah. locked up the brakes on the high side. They made a little contact over there. That part of the racetrack there, a lot of people don't know when you talk about a crown. That coming out of two, the racetrack has a crown, and it just throws you over towards the wall. Yeah, and if you happen to be on the binders right there, then you're probably going to go around. And you see pit stops there for Chuck Bound. He is in. Jason Jarrett is in. So to Ted Musgrave making a pit stop. Mark Crow is in. There's Hermie Sadler in for service. Let's go to Glenn. And Jason Jarrett has brought his Chevy in. Uh, you can see the left side tires are flat. A little trouble getting the jack under it on this side. Uh, they're going to have to hurry a little bit. They've flat spotted all four tires. And in fact, the left side, both of them were flat when Jason came in. A little bit of trouble on the left rear there. Now he's down in a way. Beats the caution car out, so he stays on the lead lap. Yeah, surprisingly, no, you know, no damage to any of these cars. They just... Uh, flat spotted her tires and uh, blew them out but no damage to the bodies and by the way it was good to see Hermie Sadler there on pit road in this race because Hermie didn't make the Napa 300 at Daytona broke his streak of 171 consecutive starts wow. in the NASCAR Bush Series he'd run 175 races 171 of them in succession he starts a new streak here today in the Alltel 200 yep they needed to make a tire change we're back in a moment. These guys have lost about three and a third miles an hour. And here's Dave Blaney. Oh! Pardon me. Yep. That's just bad timing. Yeah. But yeah, look at that way the the way the speed has dropped off so significantly. And it will continue to do that. I mean, it'll get probably six, eight mile an hour before they get to a car go to a pit stop. Lap three to lap twelve. They have lost six and a half miles an hour. All of those uh, numbers from uh, the pencil of Bill Sloboda. We thank him for that. <laughs> but I could never figure that out. Yeah. I'm glad he did. Sixth grade math, four longest years of my life. <laughs> I yield to Bill when numbers are concerned. Green flag, we're at lap number 19. Now, something to watch here, Eli, is those cars that made those pit stops, even though not normally some of the front runners, they've got tires now, and they can stay out a lot longer than anybody else. That could pay off for them later on in this run. Good point. Riding with Mark Martin now. He's in 17th. Jeff Burton just in front of him, his teammate. Wow, close to the wow. outside wall as they come out of turn four. One is LaJoy, 10 is Phil Parsons, 98 Elton Sawyer. They are running in 4th, 5th, and 6th positions. 40 is Kerry Earnhardt in ninth spot right now. There you see Jeff Burton in the 9. The 60 is Mark Martin. And here's 2nd place. Good scramble between McLaughlin and Dale Earnhardt Jr. And that 64 with Jeffrey Bodin. Yes. First Bush Series race for him in over a decade. You're wondering how he managed to qualify in light of the uh, rain out and all the special rules. He's got the points from Dennis Shoemaker, the car owner. The points that were earned last year, and that's how Jeff got in the field. Eli, you see Earnhardt Jr., he's getting a little uh, 
fixing you there in third spot. He's looking to the outside there, trying to make a move on McLaughlin. He's checking him both sides right now, but the car on the go right behind him, Randy LaJoy has moved into fourth as we watch these guys go at it back in the field. You know, Mike McLaughlin traditionally will uh, have a car that comes on later on in the race, and uh, particularly over the long haul, so uh, he might be holding Dale Jr. up just one bit. Look at that 24th on back there. You don't want to look at that. I've been, <laughs> <laughs> I've been looking at that, and I've been sitting on the edge of my seat. It's, Is that uh, a recipe for a wreck? Whoa, it looks like Daytona all over again. That's Jeff Fuller ahead of Larry Pearson in the double zero. The 59 is Mike Dillon. 83 working his way through is Wayne Grubb. 61 is Derek Pope. By the way, the color of that number 61 car is called Tote. 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 Last year on the Craftsman Truck Series, Randy Tolsma drove for the same sponsor, and I said, well, it's a bronze, it's a brown, it's a silver, and they called me and said, hey, it's Tote. Well, that's good to know. I yes. thought I corrected you on that. You did. Oh, Jerry oh, Earnhardt. Jerry Earnhardt is running in third spot. Stay down. Matt Kenseth, the leader, has taken the caution, and there is the All right, all the cars are by. Get it started. Good luck, like Frank. That's the second car he's gone the through this weekend. See. He uh, had a little incident in practice yesterday and got a, had to go to a backup car. How about this is it, Gary? Got a copy. He's had a wreck with this weekend. Two four. Speed up, Gary, and you can beat the pace car. Take it around a lap. It doesn't look like it's hurt bad enough. You can get around one time. Here's what happened. Let's see. He's on the outside. Hey, looks like he may have got a little tap there. From, Might have uh, gotten a little help from uh, uh, the Kevin Grubb car. The yep. green and blue. Yeah. Number 37. Yeah. See, that's what, when the tires start to wear wear down a little bit and the cars start to lose grip, you lose traction. If he comes out of that corner, he's in the throttle, and he has to lift just a little bit, then the 37 car's going to get look. into he's him. Already oh, yeah. oh, he's, he's already yeah. sideways. Yeah, he lost control. There he's fighting, and he does get tapped there. That yeah. ab ab absolutely sent him down through there backwards. But, but if you guys tell me, though, if he hadn't had problems in the first place, Grubb might not have run up on him. Well, but, he wouldn't have. But, yeah. uh, you know, that's defensive driving you got to do as well as offensive driving. So in for service, lap number 26. Caution for the second up time up in, here at the Rock. The Matt Kinson took the lead at lap 11, continues to pace the field. The view on pit road inside the channel lock machine. Kerry Earnhardt after spinning to bring out the second caution being tended to by the crew right now. And remember that Kerry has an onboard camera for us. A little bit. Yeah, gets a, gets a wobbling a little bit back here. So the field getting the one to go signal now after not everybody has made pit stops. As a matter of fact, only a few guys have. And Larry McReynolds, I think uh, that shows a vivid difference in today versus tomorrow, doesn't it? Well, absolutely, Eli. It was going to be monkey see, monkey do. Mike McLaughlin and his crew had decided to pit only if Matt Kenseth pitted. Now, Darrell, pay close attention. Everybody that's got a complaint <laughs> is loose. Their car has not got any forward bite. So everybody's looking at wedge adjustments, air pressure adjustments. Larry Pearson was like sideways loose. They changed four tires on him and unhooked the rear sway bar, which should definitely tighten him up. But like you say, Eli, tomorrow, lap 28, you better believe pit road would be a busy place for four more tires. But with only three sets of change under caution in this bush race, you can't do that. If we'll remember in October, that definitely determined the outcome of that race, who had tires and who didn't. Sure did. Well, it's tire management, as we talk about all the time. And quite frankly, I wish it was that way in Winston Cup. It, it adds a dimension to the race. It makes you think. It makes you race a little bit differently. And it makes the pit crew not quite as vital. It makes the driver a little more important, too. It does. It puts everything back on the racetrack and not in the pits every time. Field getting set to go back to green. Matt Kenseth ahead of Mike McLaughlin, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Randy LaJoy, and Phil Parsons, your top five. Green flag, flag. Showing a little restraint this time. Bill Parsons in fifth. One hundred ninety-seven laps make up the distance. We're at lap number thirty. See Tony Raines in the black car there. Get a little bit sideways in front of Jeff Purvis coming off turn four. Raines 
running in seventh, Purvis in eighth. Casey Atwood, number 27 machine there, side by side with Jeff Burton, who's up to 10th, and right behind them is Mark Martin now. He and Tim Fito are 11th and 12th. Actually, is Casey passing uh, Jeff? I think that's the way that's going. It looks like he's passing on the outside. There goes Earnhardt Jr. has second. But they got company. Brand, brand new LaJoy. Side by side there as they come off. Excuse me. Well, I just saw the two yeah. get side by side there as they go down in turn three. Inside always wins its early run. And, and you know what? I think that James Finch and Randy LaJoy, I think that's a marriage made in heaven. I think those guys think alike. They like to race alike. I think we're going to see a great, uh, a great deal of success with that team. And they like Already to win. Have. They, yeah, and they like to win alike, too. Oh, yeah. And, they, and James has got great cars. And, uh, Always has. And uh, Randy's just the kind of guy to fit right into that program, I believe. Of and course. Mark Reno's over there, and he's a good guy. Yeah. Randy says he's heading down to the shop, spend a few days with them. Well, now, hanging out with James Finch is a lot of fun, I can tell you. <laughs> he's a dandy. There's Randy LaJoy. That brand new sponsorship. That was announced yesterday. Well, they finally settled this race back here. You can see that Jeff Purvis has finally got ahead of these guys, but they were running side by side, lap after lap. Jeff Burton right now looking to the inside as they come down towards the front straightaway. All right, look what that inside groove means to you. Oh, yeah. I tell you, Tony Rain's right ahead of this crowd here doing an awfully good job early in this race. Uh, for a guy that hadn't raced here before, he's doing a pretty darn good job. He said to me yesterday, we were talking while it was raining out, he said, this place reminds me, he said, of an I-70 Speedway in Odessa, Missouri, just grown up. And he said the reason he likes it is because in both the Craftsman Truck Series of NASCAR and in the American Speed Association, he has won at the I-70 Speedway. He said that's what this place reminded him of when they came testing here back in late January. Well, I can tell you, he's a quick study, too, and he's not following a bad guy there to learn off of, either. So if he, if he minds his manners today, he can get himself a good finish. <laughs> and Ralph, we're tracking Mark Martin again. He's up to 10. He's coming, Eli, but he's the other one to talk about is Jeff Burton as well. Larry McCormick. Reynolds talked about how everybody was loose on the front stretch. Well, Jeff Burton is one car that is tight. He's pushing starting into the turns. Jack Roush ready to back that Mark is doing really well. He's got good grip. They're going to go through their notebook now and try to figure out what they can do to fix Burton. And Larry McReynolds, as you know, those notebooks that two crew teams have, you can't live without them. Eli, Jeff Burton's and all right now is just moving by this bunch here, but in the four car there, Jeff Purvis getting in the corner. That car is extremely loose. Yeah. Two or three times he's bobbled it. Right now, Mark Martin's just using time up. But, uh, he does not want to get in trouble there as he goes into the corner. Well, let me, let me tell you, you can fix push a lot easier than you can fix loose. Loose usually ends up in disaster, so if he's a little tight, they can fix that with air pressure. Yes. Here it goes again. Yeah, he got loose there, and you see Mark Martin side by side with him down the front straightaway. He was just waiting on him to slide out. Casey Atwood looks underneath uh, as we speak. So Martin takes ninth. Atwood in the 27th will take 10th. You've got Jeffrey Bodine in the 64 running right there as well as we look back towards Purvis. Now you know Purvis is a neighbor of Casey's. He lives up here in Clarksville, Tennessee. So uh, these Tennessee boys look pretty good today, aren't they? They are that. You know, the racetrack that they're brought up on has a lot to do with the National Speedway. Yes, uh, you learn to take uh, a lot of time in the corner there and make sure you don't burn the tires up. There you see Scramble for second. LaJoy out dragging Earnhardt Jr. up into turn number three. Yeah, I believe old LaJoy had him an extra biscuit to trade this morning. I believe yeah. so. He's coming on. <laughs> Meanwhile, Black Flag is out for Bobby Hillen Jr. They say he has a broken rocker arm is the word that has just come into my ear. That's a strange one. Yeah, I never, I never, I never heard you, that. I didn't know you black flagged somebody for a broken rocker arm. No, but I guess it must have done something else because they were just saying in my ear, they said he's got a broken rocker arm. But Gary Nelson must have his x-ray machine working. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we go down, Looking pit, down in there? Let's go to Pitt Road and get a further update. Well, guys, I was uh, talking to Tony Urey Sr., uh, Earnhardt's crew chief, and uh, we saw him go back to second, now he's dropped back again. He says the car is really driving well, but there's not a problem with the car at all. I talked to Little E right before the race, and uh, he said that he really felt good about it. Even though they had limited practice on the car, he really felt like they had a car that could win the race today. So just a little bottle on the racetrack there, but uh, he says the car feels A-OK. -okay. And of course,
still early, just lap 42 of 197. What a spectacular day this has turned out to be after the, the rain. Heck, we had to chisel some ice off the windshield this morning at the hotel. Yeah, they were in Charlotte. You know, the airport was closed for a while on account yeah. of snow, so uh, I guess we're lucky we didn't get a foot of snow here. It's worked out awfully well, though. A beautiful day, and Matt Kenseth loves it, certainly. He is up now by eight-tenths of a second as Tony Urey Sr. All of the shots for Dale Earnhardt looks on. Andy Atwood, that's seventh, eighth, and ninth place. Jeffrey Bodine in the 64, right behind them in 10th, working their way through the field. We ride with Mark Martin. Way off in the distance is Matt Kenseth, who continues to lead. He has led now 44 of the 47 laps we've run today. And think about it, guys. Last year, he only went, led one lap. Of course, it was the right one. Yeah, it was. <laughs> but he only led one lap. You know, Casey Atwood, is, like you said, such a great study. As we look at Mark Martin go under Phil Parsons down in turn three there, just behind him, Casey Atwood. He's studying this guy. Every move he makes on the racetrack, he knows he's a man on this racetrack, and he's really going to school right now. Well, when you've been a kid at home watching these races on TV, and all of a sudden you're in one of them, you know that that 60 car has won a lot of races here. And if you're a very smart kid at home watching TV when you get here, <laughs> you're going to follow him and learn how he did it. So he's a, Casey is a good a good kid, and he's going to make a great, great, great race driver. I do see one thing, though. He's earning that spot right now because that car looks to be a little bit sideways getting in the corner. He looks to be a little loose. That's Casey's first ever Bush Series start a year ago here at Rockingham. Well, my heart broke for him last Sunday. Oh, I tell you, he had him a second place finish, and uh, he was looking so good. It's a shame about what happened. My heart was up in my throat. Watch Oh, that. and then it, then you knew he was going to flip. That was yeah. the thing. When he hit that grass, he was going to go flipping. Here goes Jeffrey Bodine in the 64, trying to push Phil Parsons one more spot back to 10th. Mark Martin also gave a little uh, love tap a while ago. Watch what happens with the 60 coming up here. Coming through. Whoa. Phil. Now I can tell you Whoa. something about that 10 car. It's got a driver in there, Phil Parsons. They'll give that right back to you if he thinks you mean to do that. Yeah, that was uh, that's, that was unusual for Mark to do that. But I tell you, you can lift off that corner ever so slightly, and exactly. you're going to get a little bump from behind. So I'd probably keep Phil from being upset if he had to lift up out of the throttle a little bit. And his tires aren't good enough to catch him, so <laughs> maybe <laughs> we'll find out if made him mad later on in the day, I guess. Those guys are eight and seven tenths seconds behind the race leader, Matt Kenseth. As well as this bunch is running, that tells you how well Kenseth and LaJoy are doing in the front of the field. Now, in defense of Goodyear, folks, you, know, you hear us talking about tires going off and all that kind of thing. you got to realize something. This racetrack is very abrasive because it didn't have any rubber on when the race started. So today is going to be excessive compared to other days here as far as tire wear is concerned. And it'll get better as they go along. You'll find these cars will run a long time on tires once they get some rubber down. We told you it was uh, a goodly distance from the lead back. And there you see Kenseth, that gold-colored car. And here's the second-place battle. McLaughlin going by LaJoy. So Mike McLaughlin now moves up a spot. And Randy LaJoy will... Oh, look at McLaughlin almost lose it there. Yeah, I don't think anybody right now has got a perfect set of tires and a perfect handling car. I think it's up to the drivers right now. Daryl referenced that a little while ago. Now they're working the throttle they're trying to stay in the preferred line and not flip the car around the corner yeah and this is like this is like uh, one upsmanship here pass me on one end i'll pass you back on the other end those two guys are you know it's hard to believe those are the veterans of this series yeah, yeah. randy lajoy and mike mclaughlin but those are the veterans of this series right now great crowd here at the rock and we are happy to have you folks along as we raise the curtain on TNN's NASCAR coverage for 1999. Back with more from Rockingham in a moment. Riding now with Randy LaJoy. He is in third. He's got Jeff Burton in his rear view mirror. Jeff is up to fourth now. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is fifth. And you see those cars on the lead lap. They're starting to lap some pretty decent race cars now. Yes, they are. I'm talking about Randy LaJoy calling him old man. We prefer uh, mature. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yes, mature. I like spirits. <laughs> he got a lot of spirits in this series, and, and uh, that does a good job. I don't, I don't like that old man stuff. Mature, a mature fellow. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Indeed, yeah. so. <laughs> Thank God for that. Yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, Matt Kenson 
puts the experienced Chuck Bound a lap down. Boy, I tell you, these cars he's lapping right now, they're not giving up without a fight. No. Everybody's trying to hold him up, but they can't seem to do it right now. Good scramble there. 74 is still Reigns. Running back in 16th position now. 57 is Keller. They're battling for position. You watch it from Dave Blaney's view. Did Let's you see that 37 Eli come off of a corner down here and get a little loose looking? Uh -huh. That's what you call push loose. He got the wheels turned to the left and the thing will push a little bit when the front wheels catch it. Back end will jump around on you. That gets you in big trouble here. The CMCI WorldCom bringing you NASCAR timing and scoring. Top left of your screen. And Blaney was just pure loose there. <laughs> yeah. in the 93. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he was turning right to go left. The back of the car had lost all grip, and it was just going right on up the racetrack. Good driving not to spin that car around. Which is he had one of those old world outlaws wings available no, right about now. He needs huh? that about 20 inch right rear tire on that thing, <laughs> what he needs. <laughs> Lean on that baby. 131 laps remaining, still in the early stages. As Blaney and Reigns battle for 18th and 19th. You've got Krogh right behind. You have Krogh, the Idaho native, in that blue and yellow car. Right now, what those two guys are doing, Blaney and uh, in the 74 car, they're hitting each other is what they're doing. Mighty treacherous yeah. at this point in the race. Yeah, well, Blaney's a little quicker, but he can't get the forward bite up. That finally gets by him there. It's you're looking back. He just made it right in the middle of the corner, got back in the throttle, and got great forward bite. But, man. Put a slide job on him, didn't he? That's it. That's what it was. So everybody settles in in that particular battle for half a second at least. Looking back from Blaney's car. 59 is Mike Dillon. He was quick last week at Daytona. Had some good practice runs yesterday. Yeah, Son-in-law of uh, Richard Childress. Yeah. And the Robert Presley drove that car last year and had a lot of success in it. So we know that's a good race car, and he's doing a great job in it. See that red machine low side, the 0-5 right there? One of the great stories, Mike Stepanek. Two years in a row now, he has been the champion of the Featherlight Modified Tour Series of NASCAR and the Bush North Series. Same year, two times now, he's won two Touring Series championships. You can imagine how tough that is. Well, I can, and also I can imagine how badly he wants to be successful down here. Because he's had all that success up north, he'd like to come down here and make a name for himself down here as well. Well, he's just out of the top 20 right now. He's uh, currently showing 21st, so uh, he's doing a good job getting experience with these cars. Yep. Well, we were keeping an eye on Dave Blaney before, and Ralph, he's now hanging around 18th position. What are you hearing from the bunch? Well, I spoke to Gil Martin, the crew chief, and you folks are exactly right. He is very loose. He's been fighting it all day. They're trying to get him to hang on until they can make a pit stop and adjust the car. Dave is one of the drivers that will be pitting on the back stretch, so all that hard work is going to be a hindrance when he comes down pit road. And adding to it, Eli, as you mentioned at the beginning of the show, he only did a few seconds worth of racing at Daytona. This will be the team's first pit stop of this season. Well, hitting on the back straightaway under, if everybody pitted under green, then there's no downside. But where the downside is, if the caution comes out and you have to pit on the back. Except for one thing, the entrance on the back straightaway is much narrower than it is on the front, so you have to wear the car down because you go in real hard and sweep right back in the race track, so you have to be careful getting on the back straightaway. All right, let's do a quiz here for everybody. How much has the speed dropped in the first 60 laps of the race? I'm going to say 10 mile an hour. Buddy? Second and a half. Close, yeah. <laughs> okay. The, the actual speed has now dropped 12.2 miles an hour. Wow. In 60 laps. We're now at 73 laps. And you see that battle for third. LaJoy in the one and the nine is Jeff Burton. That is remarkable. Well, it is. And, and these drivers right now are working harder than they were when they were running faster. These hard, cars are harder to control right now at this speed than they were when they were running 10, 12 mile an hour faster. The handful... There's Chuck Bound being bypassed by that first LaJoy battle. That's a good one. Well, that has to make you feel good about tomorrow, D.W. You see that Ford just digging right around. Great uh, forward bite, and also it seems to have a lot of downforce around the corners here. It always seems to me like Jeff Burton's car on tracks that are hard on tires, he always seems to have the best package. It's a shock thing, I'm sure. He always seems to be able to get more out of his car later in the race than anybody else on old tires. 
We have run 74 laps. 71 of those have been led by Matt Kenseth. Pit stops upcoming shortly. We'll have them when we come back. And this year, you can experience country.com. It's your personal source for all things country. From race cars to country stars, you can connect to country.com. That is TNN's home on the World Wide Web. Welcome back, Eli Gold, Buddy Baker, Daryl Waltrip, Len Jarrett, Ralph Shaheen, bringing you live coverage of the NASCAR Bush Series from Rockingham, North Carolina. The race lead still held by 17, Matt Kenseth. Look how quickly range has dropped back now. The 74 about to go a lap down. Yeah, you can see people trying to make a move on Kenseth there with fresher tires right now. He's been in the pits. Uh, you can see him trying to hold him up. Kenseth has a great package. Though. I talked to Robbie Riser at breakfast this morning. He said that car is just exactly like we had it, other than a shock or two that we won the race with last year at the same time. Larry McReynolds, you better start pitting when the other guys do, or else you can lose two, three seconds a lap, huh? Well, that's the thing, and Mike McLaughlin and his team have made the first move. They're on pit road for four tires. Again, Mike's been just a little bit loose. They're putting a little bit of wedge in the right rear. Good stop on the right side. Going to the left side. Left side is up. Put that Unical fuel in there. Looks like no rubber wrap adjustments or anything, just air pressure and wedge. A little trouble, and he's down on the way. And that's the thing, Eli, once somebody commits, you can't be far behind him because on those fresh tires, he's going to be running about two to two and a half seconds faster. There's a fire the right second. there. You see on the pit lane, there is a there fire comes, crew comes coming right there to take care of that little spillage. Yeah, and Matt Kinsett is on the pit lane. He's in, so too is Tom Bodine. Let's go to pit road. Okay, Eli, like I told you, once somebody committed, you couldn't be far behind. Matt Kenseth leading the race, brings his car to the attention of the crew. They're going to tighten his car up just a little bit. He'd been loose, but when he'd been the loosest is when a car was right up behind him, which will take down for us away from the rear of the car. The right side has changed, going to the left side. Make that wedge adjustments on the left here. Again, full of fuel. It, it don't need fuel here. They can go a lot further on fuel, but need those tires. The wedge is in, and he's down and away. Clear, clear. Reigns is in for service behind the leaders. Here comes Dale Earnhardt Jr. There's Jeff Burton on your screen. Elton Sawyer is in. We mentioned Bill Parsons in. These stops, lap 85. Glenn. And Earnhardt comes down pit road. Tony Reigns just pulled in his pit spot right in front of Dale Jr. But Dale Jr. has the very last pit stop, which is an advantage. Pit space, which is an advantage. They will change four tires right after I reported that he really liked the car. About 20 laps after that, the tires really started to go away. And you can see him drop and back through the field. They're not making any changes other than air pressure adjustment. Tony Reigns is down in the way, and now we're not down in the way in 19.6 seconds. That will hand the lead to Jeffrey Bodine, who will be in for service in moments. There goes the 64 right around. Bodine has run seven races here at Rockingham in the NASCAR Bush Series, including a win back in 1984. And if you're curious, he does have six wins in this series. He's not even raced here, though, in this division in over a decade as Casey Atwood is in. Yeah, I watched uh, Jeffrey there a little bit ago, and I will call him Jeffrey since y'all do. <laughs> I, watched, I watched a little bit ago there, and he was passing cars that uh, were ready, getting ready to make pit stops, so he was still in pretty good shape. Larry Mack has an eyeball on Casey Atwood's stop. Okay, he's in his pit. The biggest problem he's got is the car in front of him blocked him in. He had to back it up. He's got his four tires and down away, but a slow stop strictly because he was blocked in by the 18 car. That is J.D. Gibbs. Other stops, Mike Swain Jr. has been in. We're at lap number 89. Jeff Purvis in for service. There goes Swain. And there still 64 is Bodine. Ed Barrier makes a pit stop after the spin on the first lap of the race. He had made his way up to the top ten. What do you think about Bodine staying out there lap after lap right now? Well, I tell you, buddy, he's running really good. He's not, he hasn't fallen off like some of the others had. The longer he can stay out there and maintain, the better shape he's going to be in if this thing happens to go green all the way. So, uh, yeah, I like it. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but I like it. There is Jeffrey. Other stops taking place now. Jason Jarrett is on pit road. Larry Pearson is running second, but remember, folks, Larry pitted at lap number 26 and number 27 when that Kerry Earnhardt caution happened. So he is on a different pit stop sequence than is uh, Jeffrey Bodine. 
Well, I can tell you one thing. The people that have stopped, if a caution was to oh. come out now, Bo oh. would have them. Oh, yeah. That's, that's what you worry about the most. One guy stays out. You catch a caution right now, and now you're a lap down. Now, interestingly, in lap 91, Larry Pearson's going to come in again, and here comes Jeffrey Bodine. So he is going to come in. That should hand the lead to Shane Hall, who is on his own pit stop sequence as well. So Jeffrey Bodine will make a stop at lap number 91 after leading here at Rockingham. You can see it's been a little tight quarters there. He's got the uh, tire marks all the way down the right side. So it is a contact sport. Yeah, he's been working the traffic pretty hard. <laughs> Shane Hall does take the lead as Larry McReynolds is watching. Okay, I'm in Jeffrey Bodine's pit. Uh, looks like a pretty routine pit stop here. But like you said, he could not afford just to stay out there. Had a caution come, he would have been a hero. Looks like no wedge adjustment four times, and he's down and away. They had a little bit of trouble on the right side with the jack. It slipped down, but they got it back up all right. And uh, looks like a routine stop. It's a pretty good stop. So there is the race leader, Shane Hall. And he was involved in yeah. that backstretch spin at lap number 15, you remember. Yeah, remember we said those guys that came in then, uh, maybe not at that time, but later on might look pretty good. Yeah, well, he looks good for just a tick or two. He'll come in at lap number 93, and that should hand the lead as Joe Bessie pits also should hand the lead now to Mike Stefanik. Indeed it is. Mike Stefanik is now the race leader as Shane Hall's crew goes to work on that Chevrolet. See, when you lead these races like this, no matter how you did it, when you go back home, you say, yeah, we was leading the race. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it makes for a great story. You see him taking tape off the front of the car there, running a little bit hot. Imagine the rubber buildup in the front of these cars from the tires wearing so much. Yeah, you, you can, see, can it. see it right down here. That's falling off of the grill. That's rubber on the front of the car that's falling off on the ground there. So it'll get packed up down there, and then the car will run a little hotter. Or so you see 37 seconds of a pit stop, and there is the leader. First time ever he has led a NASCAR Bush Series race. This is his 16th event over the years. But the first time he has ever led a NASCAR Bush Series race. And why not? It's a very familiar place for him to be, because up north he wins all those races in the Modifieds and the uh, North Cars. So... Uh, He's going to bring her into pits now, and whoa, he's wobbling a little bit. There's that entrance to pit road buddy was talking about. So Mike Stefanik pits, and that will make Mike Dillon the race leader. Other pit stops include Ted Musgrave, who's in for service as well. All of this happening under green. We are at lap number 96 of 197. Stefanik now yielding the lead to Dillon with Hermie Sadler second. Kenseth an uneventful <laughs> few laps here for Matt Kenseth. Watch what happened seconds ago off turn two battling with uh, Fidua in the 36. Fidua, a little contact there, just enough to move him out and he got loose there. You see he broke momentum and he's back up to full throttle now. And yeah. he still leads by one and eight tenths seconds on McLaughlin. And we heard him say a little earlier that he was loose with somebody right up behind him and <laughs> that was a little closer than he probably wanted that guy to be. But Kenseth is the race leader by one and eight ten seconds on the man behind him, Mike McLaughlin. Let's take a look at how everybody uh, is stacking up now. From the leader, Kenseth, 1.7 seconds back. Not to that man, that's Lyndon Amick, who right now is in 33rd a lap down, but there's the battle for position. McLaughlin, the 34, Jeff Burton in the 9, that is the battle for the third, the second and third position. There's Phil Parsons now. He's not running with the leaders. He's running in 14th place right now. Todd Bodine is there. That's 15th and 16th and 17th. 83 is Grubb. Then you come back to Larry Pearson, the cheese it double zero. He's in 18th spot. And there's Mark Martin in fourth position right now. So Mark is running at this point some five seconds behind the race leader. Then you drop further back to the other cars still battling, not really on the lead lap at this stage of the day, but out there nevertheless putting whatever they can. Those cars there, you see as many as eight laps back at this stage of the day. The four is Purvis. He's running in 21st position, a lap down. And you've got Hermie Sadler in the 72 right there. The one is LaJoy. He's in fifth. And LaJoy is seven seconds behind the race leader. 
Then further back, Green in the 50 car. He's running in 35th position right now, two laps down. You've got the 37, Grubb, the 56, Crow, the 74 is Reigns. They're all running at least a lap down. They're 23rd, 24th, 25th spot. Mike Swain Jr. right there, subbing for Santer. He is two laps down in 36th position. Then Casey Atwood into your picture. He is running in sixth right now on the lead lap, as is obviously Jeffrey Bodine. They are 13 and a half seconds behind the leader, Matt Kenseth. That is sixth and seventh on the screen. A big spread from first back to seventh, and then some more distance right there. You go back to the Bobby Hamilton Jr. car. He is in 40th, eight laps down, had an extended stay on pit road a while ago. Jason Jarrett in the 33. You've got Dandy Kirby from Nashville. He's running and running well, one would have to say. He didn't necessarily expect to win this race. He's in 36th position, a couple of laps down. 05 is Mike Stefanik, who led momentarily there before making his pit stop. And he cycles back in in 25th position, a couple of laps down. And again, there's Kirby. And here comes Dale Earnhardt Jr. He's running in eighth. And he, at this point, is being shown some 17 seconds behind the race leader. And to put that in perspective, 17 seconds, he's about, uh, what, buddy, six or eight seconds from going a lap down. Yeah, so, exactly. Uh, he's going to have to pick the pace up. There's six, Joe Bessie. He's in 26th position. He's two laps down to Matt Kenseth, the leader. Taking you further back so you know where your favorites are. Shane Hall, who led, then made a pit stop. He's back on the racetrack in 27th, a couple of laps back. Well, it's been a really surprisingly clean race. Yeah, really wow, these guys have uh, really managed themselves well, and uh, there's been some great racing. I mean, all back through the field. You saw Mark Crowe go out of your screen right there. Then you come to Dylan and Cope. Now, Dylan was running among the race leaders a short while ago, but now after his stop, he's two laps down in 29th, and Derek Cope will pass him. So Cope takes 29th, and Dylan drops back to 30th. They're battling for position on the speedway. Then you cycle around further. We talked about the 36 before. That's Tim Fidoa, and the 28th or it should be the 29 right there. That's Ted Musgrave. Musgrave is in 31st position right now. There's Chuck Bown had problems early. Three laps down in 37th place. But as you can see, Eli, a lot of these guys lost a lot of time in and out of the pits because they uh, made pit stops that were, you know, it all correlates to what happened coming in and out. Well, as we watch Matt Kenseth just in front of him, Tim Fedewa passed the leader a while ago and has maintained that uh, gap that he has between. Now, caution would come out. He would make that lap up. He seemed to be almost as fast as Kenseth. Now, look right there in the middle of the picture. Here comes Jeff Burton. Yeah. It's just a matter of time. Oh, problems. Oh. Mike Swain gets drilled hard by the Gibbs car. Mike Swain Jr. and Gibbs bringing out the caution. Mean, mean hit. Boy, has that car and team ever absorbed some hits. Yeah, and back behind there, Matt Kenseth locked up the brake, slid all the way down the back straightaway, didn't come around, but really had the binders on. That could have been big. Also saw Ed Barrier's car sitting there, folks. There he is after his spin on the first lap, and he had worked his way up to 10th place. He is now involved. So Mike Swaim Jr. with J.D. Gibbs and Ed Barrier bring out the third caution of the day, lap 115. And you can see it's going to be a while. A lot of cleanup to do, a lot of debris all across the racetrack. And wow, man. Oh, another car got a piece of it, too. The Waitmark Crow car. There's Joe Bessie nosed up against the wall. You know, that's one thing, Eli, we can talk all we want to about that second turn, but nobody, until you come off that corner one time and look up three cars spinning in front of you, do you realize how narrow it is over there? Yeah, well, you just come off of there and the car really just, what I call, unloads on you. Yeah. Uh, and the back end will just jump right out from under you and away you go. It's been years ago, and we're probably all going to date ourselves here. Remember Bubba Nissen? He had one of the toughest hits I've ever seen back there. Watch this again. 
Barrier gets involved there. Earnhardt checks up uh -huh. on the inside there. Oh, oh. and then Bessie yeah. hits Barrier. Yeah, something happened to Dale Jr. He just yeah. looked like he stopped. And then behind him, oh, oh, look at the, Swaim trying oh. to sneak to the wall. Boy, that, been the, that would have been the second week in a row that 18 car turned somebody over. Well, in the 47, Santerre last week in Daytona, you know, had to Different drivers in yeah. both cars. Yeah. He almost went over. Andy Santerre, I know you're watching in the hospital. Don't start jumping up and down now. Yeah. Tough to watch your car be involved in a deal like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Every time you start your car, you among everybody on the racetrack except for the guys who were involved in the accident, and there were a lot of them on the back straightaway. J.D. Gibbs has driven the number 18 MBNA car around, but Ralph Shaheen has caught up with seemingly everybody else. Ralph? Well, Eli, we'll start with Mike Swain. Mike, you were the first one involved, and you got airborne. What happened? The 18 car, you know, I was trying to warp my way around the 37, and had got around it coming up off of two, and the 18 car lost it right in front of us. And you know, when that happens, he bounced it off the wall. He just, just there's nowhere to go and uh, got on the brakes. But oh. when it happens that fast, uh, you know, brakes don't do no good. Uh, I'd like to thank George Debitart and Joe Carver for giving me this opportunity. And I'd like to uh, thank Chevrolet and Monroe and Kendall Motor Oil as well. Uh, had a real good time, learned a lot, and I uh, guess we'll go get them at Vegas. Uh, What's it feel like to fly one of those cars? Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun, you know. I really learned a lot today. And it, was it feels fun to go flying through the air like that? Oh, I thought you were talking about around the race track. No, it's, uh, it's not fun at all. I couldn't tell where I flipped over or not, but, uh, you know, I'd like to say hi to Andy. Andy, uh, sorry about your car, bud, but we did the best we could. Just uh, can't help other people's mistakes. All right, we also have Ed Barrier here. Ed, what did you see? Uh, I saw a bunch of smoke off the corner there and let up, you know, and somebody got in the back of me, and I guess they didn't see it. That's twice I got hit in the back today, right on the green flag lap there, spun. Started from the rear and come back and... I don't know if we made the top 10 or somewhere there, but we had a good fast car. And I mean, it was just a shame because really I was just sitting there biding my time, you know, trying to work through traffic there and running with Dale Jr. I mean, him was trying to come up through there and somebody got in trouble in front of us. Just one of them things, you know, I guess it's, I hate it for Lear and all the folks at the UAW and guys work on the car. I mean, you know, we had a real good race car today and I just hate it for them. And a frustrating day as well for Joe Bessie. Joe, two weeks in a row, frustrations for you. Are you okay and what did you see? I'm fine. I didn't see anything. I got up under, I was the one that got up underneath Ed. Just, he was at the point of the corner where he could see around it and I was at the point where I couldn't see around it and just hardly even got a chance to get on the bake, on the brake. And just disappointing day. We had a pretty good run going. Uh, so did Ed and two of us kind of need to break and just, Happy we get that power team car in the Winston Cup show tomorrow and maybe Jeffrey can put on a show and say hi to back to everybody back in Gulf Mills and uh, better days are coming. Glad you're okay, Joe. Glenn Jarrett? Hey, thanks, Ralph. I feel a little slighted. I don't have anybody to talk to over here. But a bad problem for Dale Earnhardt Jr. On that pit stop, he got in, got out real good, a little too well, in fact. They left the lug nut off the left front. Junior had to come back down pit road. He is now at the tail end of the field. Boy, that big. You know one thing you, you could see there? We had the luxury of having replay. That were three wrecks. The, the first wave was Dale Earnhardt Jr. just in front of the, the wreck there. But as they come off the corner of there, he checked up just a little bit. And that started a chain reaction. And as the other guys come off the corner, the uh, Gibbs got into the outside wall, and that was the second wave, and then there was the third wave that actually wrecked later on. Yeah, the guy that was really lucky was the, uh, Junior, because if you go back and look at the replay, that 18 car almost clipped him in the left rear, on the right rear there as he went by. Speaking of the 18 car, I believe Larry Mack has caught up with J.D. Gibbs. Eli, I'm here with J.D. Gibbs. J.D., you had just brushed the wall before that, been in the pits. Uh, what happened from your vantage point? Well, it just uh, it went right in the wall there coming off, too, and I hate it for the guys behind me. Just uh, must have cut a tire down that, that first time. Uh, hit the wall, had a little vibration, and just uh, went on in. That's the story, Eli, from J.D. Gibbs' pit. So that's what's happening on the pit lane. We're going to go back to racing here in just moments. 122 of 197 laps on the board. That's how they're running right now, under caution. It's in time for the restart. Boy, it's a slow one, too. Play. Kept them way down in speed, as did the car to his inside, trying to get a lap back. Yeah, I think a little cat and mouse game there. I think that uh, Kenseth was trying to bring him down real slow, maybe get that inside car to jump him even. 
Well, drivers, yeah. drivers do Look that. Look at that for the lead. Jeff Burton just makes the move, grabs the lead away from Matt Kenson. So Kenson will lead from 97 to 125, and Jeff Burton will take the lead at lap number 126, and he's gone. Man. Matt Kenseth right now is in jeopardy of going to third spot as you see McLaughlin there in the 34 moving up, really on the move right now. I think Kenseth's car may be just a little bit better on long run, but right now he's in trouble. Boy, look at that. Oh, oh we got that trouble. 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 Big trouble, You're big right. time. Keller, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Oh, Keller oh, comes oh, down oh, against oh, McLaughlin. Dale Jr. Jr. Mentioned Earnhardt Jr. and caution is on the speedway. And then Amick also hit road there with torn up car. There is Amick. How many guys are racing back here, guys? There's Earnhardt. You see him into that barrier there, right for a corner. It matched all in. There's a heck of a race back to the line for a lap back, y'all. Musgrave will manage to get one of those laps back as everybody tries to work themselves back and do get there. Bobby Hamilton Jr., I believe, got a piece of that. There's Dale Earnhardt. There's the big, one of the big losers, Jason Keller. Yeah, you can see front and rear damage to that car. The rear end house is knocked back in the left front fence. The wheel is knocked all the way back to the firewall. The thing about Junior is, it all started in the pits a little bit ago. Had to come back in and put that lug nut on. Put him at the back of the field. Get in jeopardy when you're back there like that. You can see the coolers on the front there broken and also the radiator. Tell you, one of the other guys who had nearly gotten involved was uh, McLaughlin. He was not involved in the accident, but everybody kind of checked up and McLaughlin managed to continue on around and come back in third where he was running. But uh, looked for the moment as looked like a rubbernecking delay on the highway where everybody kind of looked. And then Amick was just minding his business and he got tagged when uh, Keller came rolling back. And two weeks in a row now for the defending series champion. Yeah, and, and I'm hesitant to say this, but Dale Jr. is going to have a rough year this year. He's got a lot. You know, last year there were no expectations. Yeah, last year he could do no wrong. He was a rookie. And uh, they got, he's got a lot of weight to carry this year. And uh, it's going to be a tough year for him. See him getting his breath back there as he takes the uh, uh, things off his shoes there. He's walking down pit road. But that's a good sign. He's not limping. He seems to be in good shape. All right, let's take a look at what happened. Uh, they just get really bottled up. Earnhardt, you see him there. Everybody got, yeah, you're right. They got bottled up ahead of him. Now, this gets ugly right here. Now, Phil Parsons in that 10 car on the bottom there actually made the first contact. Well, and then look at Earnhardt get knocked into the outside wall. And then he comes across and hits the inside barrier. And there he gets Lyndon Amick. Actually, I thought the 83 of Wayne Grubb made a, might have made the first contact. It's maybe worth looking at that again. Uh, it was tough to tell. Riding with Phil Parsons. Down in the corner here. Let's just take a good look. Down in the corner. Watch this right now. Boom, right there. Yeah, yeah just a little yeah. light tap, but it, it got him wiggling. Yep. E Eli. You got it. You, why do I even bother? Eagle eye me. <laughs> look at Darrell. He said, I think I'll just leave. <laughs> Watch it again. Another angle. He'll go up into turn three as it starts. There's Phil Parsons in the 10. Right there, there's That's contact. where he catches it. Yeah, right. Yeah. And it's just enough to get that car bobbling right in the middle of that corner when you're in the gas. Oh, Jason Keller does not even know what happened to him. You see him locked up there. He backs up and gets into Earnhardt there with the left rear corner. And then watch the 35. He'll come along. Lyndon Amick trying to use the infield apron there if he can. And Keller says, boom. It's kind of like a magnet. Yep. Just drew right to him. He can only dodge so many bullets. So caution is on the speedway for the fourth time today here at The Rock. 130 laps now complete of 197. Jeff Burton is the race leader. It's under caution here at The Rock. Bill is now a lap down at 18 spot. Just the least little bit of a nudge on the front of the nose of that car where he got into the back of some of the others, including Wayne Grubb. And Darrell said, said it great to us during the commercial. He goes, you see that? I said, no. He goes, you see that little bit of a smudge right there keyed that big old yeah. accident. I mean, you can hardly even see it. But right in there. Yeah. Yeah. 
And everybody was involved. Jason Keller was involved. Wayne Grubb, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Lyndon Amick was involved. Obviously, Phil Parsons. So, too, the 53 machine of Hank Parker Jr. And we've not even mentioned Kevin LePage. He never made it around off the high side of the racetrack. Let's see if we can catch up with him in the garage. Here's the heavily damaged number 99 of Kevin LePage. Kyle Harvey trying to get the car up in the air so they can get it into the truck. Kevin, what happened? Well, there was a few cars that didn't pit there on that uh, one restart. Uh, either they were out of tires or whatever. And we got off into three, and, and they shuffled them up, got them up in the middle lane. So I just slowed down to, to go to the bottom. And next thing I knew, I got hit on the left side, pushed the red man Monte Carlo into the wall. And we're not running for points, so we just decided to bag it in and uh, you know let these guys get this car ready for the next week. How is the track surface out there today? Is it starting to come around after all the rain? No, I mean, the tires the tires are gone after 30 laps. You just hang on. And uh, we didn't really have a good setup in the car today. We were off a little bit, but uh, we had a top 15 race car. We are just trying to stay out of trouble. But uh, unfortunately, our day's cut short. Eli? Well, that's the story. And DW, very much like you and I talked at the opening of the show. Oh, yeah, the tires, 30 laps. I mean, I think he may have stretched it a little bit, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> well, they continue track cleanup. The restart shortly with Jeff Burton still showing the way. Spun around on the very start of the event. And on lap number 15, with help from Dave Blaney, Chuck Bound gets spun. Here's how Blaney saw it unfold. That was at lap 15. Lap number 26, Kerry Earnhardt spins on the back stretch. Back on the track now, 100 laps down. Good scramble right there as Matt Kenseth gets shoved aside. And then moments later, J.D. Gibbs, after hitting the wall, takes out Mike Swain Jr. Then, in a related incident, Ed Barrier got involved in an accident, and then moments ago, the caution comes out for the fourth time. Lap 128, collecting a handful of cars, Jason Keller and others. So that is what has happened over the first 136 laps, and Jason Keller is in the infield now with Larry McReynolds. Well, Eli, I'm standing outside the infield care center. Uh, Jason Keller just walked out. Jason, finally getting a sponsorship. Uh, nowhere to go on that. What happened? Really don't know. A couple of cars uh, got kind of bottled up in front of me, and, uh, you know, one of those things, trying to get down and get away from them, and uh, I think I caught in the left rear and then, you know, got piled in there on top of it. But uh, like you say, it's a shame, you know, we got a great sponsor at Fleming Team IGA and Farb and all the guys. So, uh, you know, we had a little bit of problem at Daytona. was hoping to come here and do well, but the uh, car was running pretty good. You know, I thought we had a good shot at top 10, but uh, I had to go to Vegas and roll the dice there. Well, that's a story on a fellow that had a 22nd place finish at Daytona. Just can't quit got going yet. Uh, Ralph, what have you got? Well, Larry, we got Lyndon Amick over here whose car is up on jack stands. Lyndon, how bad is your car? Looks like they're trying to get you back out there. Well, you can hear all the noise here. We're going to have to uh, replace the rear truck arm on the right side. And, uh, you know, it's just a, a tough deal. A lot of stuff going on here, but, you know, I want to thank the people from Scanna, Powertail, and Erickson, and... You know, we're trying off hard just to finish. That's all I want to do is get some points, but I got caught up in somebody else's mess. Last time it was my mess, and now I got caught up in somebody else's. But we're just going to come back and try to get back out there and get a little points. You know, the one that really benefited from that caution just then was Tim Fetal. Not long ago, he passed the leader, and now he's all the way up to eighth place. Green flag, lap 139 of 197. Burton the leader, Kenseth second, McLaughlin third, LaJoy is fourth, Mark Martin runs fifth, Casey Atwood is sixth, Elton Sawyer seventh, Tim Fidua is eighth, Jeffrey Bodine is ninth, Dave Blaney runs tenth, Todd Bodine is eleventh, Jeff Purvis twelfth, and Larry Pearson thirteenth. Those are the thirteen cars on the lead lap as you see the Napa Field standing update letting you know exactly where your favorites are running. It was pretty gutsy on the restart, huh? Oh, it yeah. was. But, uh, you know, they made it that time. And yeah. Boy, the, there's such a disparity in, in uh, tires right now. Some guys are on old tires, some guys are on fairly new tires, and it's making it really hard. Meanwhile, it's going to be tough for Dale Earnhardt Jr. to watch all of this unfold while he's in the garage. Glenn? Oh, are you okay? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. You had to come back in to put that lug nut back on. I know you probably trace it back to that, but what happened from your vantage point? I just seen a couple cars get crossed up, and I thought that uh, the two that I made it through were only two in the wreck, but there was another one on the other side of them guys, and I just didn't see him split up in front of me. It's a shame, man. We're really nothing uh, I could have done. Just try to get on the brakes or anything else probably wouldn't have helped it, but 
to try to get through the wreck. I figured something like that was going to happen, getting bottled back there in the back of the pack on a restart like that, and it's just tough. I mean, uh, it's a lot of fun coming to Rockingham. It's just a shame getting uh, next up in the wreck early. Well, Eli, that's the story from our Bush Grand National Champion, who I guess all he can do is just ride this sophomore jinx out. Indeed so, and it's the Larry, uh, or excuse me, uh, let's say Larry Finch, that is the car he, oh, James Finch's car, the number one with Randy LaJoy making the move right there to grab a position from Mike McLaughlin. We thank Larry McReynolds, who sounds remarkably fresh as a daisy, <laughs> and why not? His car qualified well for tomorrow's event. We've got, got a heck of a race going on right here, buddy. I'm telling you, for second place. Yeah, uh, we do. Burton, Burton's kind of checked out, but everybody else is having a wheel in the back. Second, third, fourth, and fifth right there. As you see, uh, the one there, uh, Randy LaJoy, looking to the inside. You're riding with Mark Martin down. He's just behind Mike McLaughlin there, closing in on the back bumper of his car. Mark is in fifth, and as good as... Uh, good as Kenseth was you know he complained about his car being a little loose early on and that only gets worse as the track changes and the tires wear down so he's probably hauling at the crew right now we got to tighten this thing up which he didn't do earlier and the same things happened to Dale Jarrett here on a number of occasions where he's led a lot of the race and then somebody will come up at the end of the day and beat him and that's kind of what's happened here right now well you can see the difference right there Randy LaJoy in the white car right on the very bottom and Kenseth moves up about a half a car length there that means he's not getting as good a grip in the center part of the corner as Randy LaJoy and they should have fairly, uh, I think they made pit stops about the same time, so tire-wise, they should be about the same. Right, lap 117, we're now at 145. And Ralph, what are you hearing from Mark Martin's bunch? Well, Eli, on the first round of pit stops, they took two rounds of wedge out of the car. Then on the second pit stop, they took a spring rubber out of the car. Right now, Mark likes running as high up on the racetrack as he possibly can. Well, that battle is a good one right there between Martin and, Le and McLaughlin, and Martin makes the grab. And you yeah. see LaJoy has grabbed uh, the position from Kinsip for second, just ahead of them. Well, we heard Kinsip say that he didn't like a car right behind him, and <laughs> LaJoy was all but touching him, so I'm thinking he probably bet he got him off behind him. And this is for second on back. 2.2 seconds behind Jeff Burton, who took the lead at lap 126. And the spotters are telling Matt Kenseth right now, right behind you is Mark Martin. He seems to be awful fast in their right. Well, the other thing they might be talking about, too, is, you know, Dale Jr., his biggest problem for the championship, he's out of the race. Right now, Kenseth could fall back to third or fourth here and uh, still have a pretty big, pretty big day point-wise because he had a great finish at Daytona last week. So, and Jr. didn't either, didn't finish there either. The old big picture. The big picture. Even this early in the season, as Jeffrey Bodine right there, the number 64, running in ninth spot. You've got eighth, actually, now, and when they get back to the stripe, because he's made the move around Fidoa in the 36th. Scoring done at that line across the racetrack as they come back to the stripe. So the official change will be recorded as they get back here in front of the main grandstand. I check with Larry and uh, those guys down in the pits. Has any of these front runners got tires left? I think they're probably all out of tires. So they're, what you see is what you get. See Jason Jarrett there getting a lot of track time right now and running pretty darn well, I think. Right, he's running in 20th. He's a couple of laps down in that multicolored 33. The 66 is Todd Bodine. He is on the lead lap in 11th. 32 cars still on the racetrack. All these young drivers have to learn. They got to learn their lessons the hard way. Even old dad can sit up there and tell them, take your time, do this, do that. It's just like telling any kid anything. They got to learn it on their own. They got to learn it the hard way. There is the leader, two and three tenths seconds ahead of the white number one of Randy LaJoy. And there you'll see the spread. That's what 2.3 seconds looks like wow. here at the Rock. Let's go to Glenn Jarrett. Hey, D.W., to answer your question, I'm standing in uh, Randy LaJoy's pit right now. Mark Reno making some notes there. They do have one more set of tires. In fact, the crew guys are sitting on the new tires. They're up on the wall. So Randy LaJoy at least has another set of tires. Well, that's good to know. If they're sitting on them, does that mean they're buffed in? <laughs> you see that 51 right there on the dash. That's to our colleague, the right, Bonnet. Neil Bonnet. Yeah. Ooh, close to the wall. Boy, he snapped her out there, didn't he? Jeff Burton leads. You're riding with the third-place runner, Mark Martin. 
Oh, as we've got caution Trump. on the speedway. We'll update you as soon as we come back to The Rock. I mentioned just as we were going to break, Jeff Krogh in a single car incident. And uh, you'll see on the replay exactly what happened. One of those freakish things that you do see every now and then. And we'll uh, show you the pictures as to how Jeff Krogh's afternoon apparently comes to an end. Pit stops have been taking place, but watch what happens here in DW. You can pick up the uh, the musical entertainment. Raw, raw. You picked a fine time to lose me, loose wheel. Oh, that man. Ooh, I'm yeah. glad you can drive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I didn't want to be too good. Yeah, the, the, the wheel just came off. Uh, the wheel came off. That's and then it exactly comes what. right back to him. Yeah, tried to hop back on, but uh, wow, you know, you know it just looking looks at like it, no look. Yeah, I'm looking at the center part. It don't yeah. seem to be torn out. No. no. Well, no, 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 it doesn't. The center yeah. part is there. That's truly a loose wheel. Yeah. Must have just pulled away before the pit stop was done. Now, or what something? can happen, Eli? Is, uh, if the lugs are loose, it'll actually back vibrate, them off. Yeah. Vibrate them off. Yeah. So Jeff Krogh has his problems. Meanwhile, pit stops took place for uh, virtually everybody. Here came all the leaders. Remember, Mark Martin is pitting on the back stretch, but uh, he did make his stop once he got around to his appointed side of the racetrack. Yeah, where did he come out? You know, Mark will come out seventh. I want to brag on somebody right now because you're going to hear his name a whole lot. Casey Atwood is in <laughs> fifth place mm -hmm. right now. Yep. What a great job he's doing out there. He acts like a man that's been on the racetrack for 20 years. Yeah, he just quietly, you know, picks his way along, and you don't even think he's out. You don't even think about him. And there he is in the top five. His third career Rockingham start here today. That's him right there coming out of the fence. There he is in the number 27 machine. Last week's deal scared him. I guess. He was very, very, you know, because, you know, race car drivers don't always tip their emotions. And he said, you know, I was about as close to crying when that deal was over as I've been in a long time. It, it just scared the Dickens out. Well, for sure he had a, uh, a second place already sewed up, and it was just a couple laps to go. But the amazing part, he's 18 years old. Yeah. Yeah. That is reminding you. Talk about a future. Yeah. yeah. You, you, you don't mind crying when you're young. And when you're old, it's when you're in the middle that you don't want anybody to know you cry. When you're a tweener. Let's go to Glenn Jarrett and get an update on all the pit stops. Okay, guys, let's take a look at what the leaders did. Jeff Burton uh, came in first and went out first. He had four tires and fuel, uh, no major adjustments on the car. Randy LaJoy took four tires and fuel. The car was a little bit loose. He didn't like the way it felt. They tightened that car up a little bit, and he came within just a hair of beating Burton back out of the pits for first place. What you got, Ralph? Well, we had Mark Martin back here. They took four tires and fuel, and they still have another set of tires if they need them. Unfortunately, pitting on the back stretch, they had a solid 19-second stop. They still lost four positions. Let's check in with Larry Matt. Well, Ralph, I'm standing between Matt Kenseth's pits and Mike McLaughlin, and now we're getting like Winston Cup racing. You run 25 green laps at Rockingham, the caution comes out, you put four more tires on. It's actually like the track is tightening back up just a little bit for these guys. They changed four tires, made a little bit of adjustment on the track bar and the wedge to free those things up. But you know what, DW and Buddy, I don't know if there's enough threads on the jack boat for the track bar or wedge to catch Jeff Burton. Uh, we're, we feel the same way I do anyway. Uh, it looks good to you. Yeah, no, Burton's checking out on him. Uh, they'll race him here a little bit on this restart, but I think he's the man. 39 laps to go to settle it. We'll see whether the track gear team can hang on or whether Randy LaJoy can make it two wins and two starts. This back to green Whoa. here at the Rock. They about back. All they Whoa. do, bottle Whoa. off the corner. Whoa. Jason Jarrett in the middle of all that mess, among others, but everybody uses their heads. There's a car hung up on the outside here that just can't get going, and he's really backing everybody up. That's going to be... Oh, that's uh, the 83 car. He's, yep. He was involved in an accident earlier, Wayne Grubb. Yeah, he's up there in the way. Boy, I'm telling you, you talk about a recipe for a wreck. This oh, is it. Oh, 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 this one. They can't, oh, oh. Oh, there they, they go. go. They just can't keep doing that. Can they? Wow, these guys are, they drive like trained professionals. I've never seen anything We've like got it. caution. Oh, caution three. off turns three and four now. As in the wall is Andy Kirby, the Nashville, Tennessee driver. Everybody hard on the binders, as you see. And caution is on the speedway, running in 29th, Kirby is. Wow. Five laps down to the leader. And Wayne Grubbs had a right front go flat going into turn three, and he got in the wall at the same time that Kirby had trouble. There yeah. they are right there. 
That 83 car got hung up on the outside. I guess that was grub, and he couldn't get down, and it was just causing everybody to bottleneck. And he finally had a flat tire and hit the wall going in the third corner over there. He, that's where he stopped. He hit up way over there. Wow. Andy Kirby tested here for a couple days. Phil Parsons getting a good bit of that as well. Radiator busted. You can see the steam coming out around the front wheel there. I tell you, Phil Parsons has the worst luck of anybody. Isn't that the truth? Every week. Unbelievable. Now, these two cars were not in the same wreck. No, that's right. They're having to stop near each other. Kirby, the Nashville regular, who tested here in January. Sponsored by Mapco Express at home, his longtime sponsor. That's some convenience stores. They were bought out by a new company, the Williams Travel Centers, and they've come on board. And, of course, there is the 83 of Wayne Grubb, Mechanicsville, Virginia. A very talented uh, family of racers. Kevin Grubb, his brother, drives the Timberwolf Chevrolet. Uh, the double zero, Larry Pearson, he got a little damage in that, too, Eli. He came down pit road also. So those stops being made at lap number 163. Bill Parsons, Larry Pearson, there you see Wayne Grubb. I'm not so sure that some of these cars didn't get banged up a little bit over there coming off a of turn two there. Yeah, we saw a lot of smoke there. Those yeah, cars yeah. were hanging into each other. That was incredible. See Purvis there, the Lance Snack Food Chevrolet, shown in 13th position on the lead lap. Boy, he doesn't look like he's in any hurry to get out of there either. Yeah, there he goes. Watch again, right yeah, off the restart here. This is incredible. Watch all these cars. There's smoke from the right rear of the Reigns car. Maybe some sheet metal damage. Yeah, now, yeah there's big contact There's right Hermie. There. Hermie Sadler, the 72. Yeah. Jason Jarrett will join that fray. And watch this now. From the chopper overhead. You'll see a car come. Fine. They just get bumped all over the place. Yeah. That's where Purvis got in a piece of the action there, and there you see the 83 of Wayne Rock. Yeah. I know we didn't do a very good job of explaining it, but it's, it's just hard you to pretty well see it. It was like pinballs yeah. bouncing off each other. So caution is on the speedway. Cleanup continues. Lap 164. 33 laps to settle. The Alltel 200 with Jeff Burton and Randy LaJoy at the top of the list. Two of the NASCAR Winston Cup and Bush Series season. Season just getting going, but there's always late-breaking news in the world of motorsports. You can get all the up-to-the-minute highlights, interviews, and all the latest news on race day. It is coming your way tomorrow. Special time, 11.30 in the morning Eastern, 3 o'clock in the afternoon Pacific time, right here on TNN Motorsports. Check it out tomorrow. That's the cleanup out in turn number four. Andy Kirby and Wayne Grubbs machines being removed from the scene. And there you see the attrition list. Yeah, nutrition's high today. <laughs> oh, be careful how you do that. Oh, really? Yeah, I'll write about you. Oh, it didn't come in. <laughs> oh, okay. And so being amphibious wouldn't be good either, right? No. No. Uh, okay. No. Well, okay. Those old lines anyway. Yeah. But it's all right. Yeah, it's okay. They always sound. By the way, Ayla, I got I got to do something I normally don't. Do. I got to say hi to Jessica. She's home today. Is she? Sick, got the flu, oh. and she doesn't feel good. So I want to say hi to her and Sarah and Stevie. Oh, certainly. We look forward to seeing her back at the racetrack. Yeah, yeah. Poor little girl. Mm. Misses her daddy. Of course, who wouldn't miss you? <laughs> <laughs> lap one, lap oh, 167. What don't, does that mean? Don't go there. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> we, we all miss you. <laughs> we are 30 laps away from wrapping this one up. Let's go to pit road. Well, guys, we saw early in the race that Matt Kenseth was having trouble on restarts. Robbie Reiser just went to Mike McLaughlin Pitts and said, guys, we're having trouble with our shifter. Just tell Mike to be on his toes. We may not get going like we should get going on this restart. Darrell, what's the deal? Last week in uh, Daytona, transmissions were, I mean, that's the first time I've ever, what are they doing to these transmissions to have all the problems they're having now? Well, at Daytona, I could understand it because there you cut the gears down and make the transmissions as light as you possibly can because of reciprocating weight. Reciprocating, is that that's, right? Yeah, yeah, that'll work. That, that'll work. Uh, and, and here, I'm not sure, maybe they're trying some of that same technology here because it's just a little less... Uh, parts you got to get spinning and then you get up off the corner a little quick with all that stuff light so they could be having trouble with it. Plus they use a real light oil in these transmissions to keep, yeah, keep the 
keep the wall all item too. Now we'll see if it affects Matt Kenseth here on the get-go. That could be an old Indian trick too. Yeah, you know, keep behind. <laughs> yeah, keep everybody kind of laid back just uh -huh. a little bit there. Give me a little room. My he... point is to say, watch me in the corner. I'm real loose. You don't <laughs> right. want to be on, you don't right. be on the outside yeah. of me. Yeah. Well, we know Kenseth has been a little loose with somebody right behind him, so maybe they don't want somebody right behind him. Now let's see what happens. 29 laps to settle it. Johnny Norton, green flag. Green. Lockton laid back, Kenseth says, see ya. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, it could be a winning tree. Yeah. Uh, Burton, LaJoy, Kenseth, McLaughlin, and Atwood, your top five. Well, if we're going to have a race for the win here, a race for the lead, it's going to be right now. So we're going to have to get up there and get after Burton or the race is over. Yeah, you need to at least be in the mirror so you yeah. distract him a little bit. If you give a guy a half a lap lead, I tell you, they can run a perfect lap around this racetrack and really beat you up. Yep. MCI WorldCom bringing you all the scoring rundowns you'll need there in the upper left of the screen. Now 13 drivers on the lead lap. There's Casey Atwood on the inside there. I tell you, he drives the wheels off that car trying to get up there to McLaughlin for this uh, position. And that would be fourth place that McLaughlin has that Atwood wants. Riding with Dave Blaney. He's on the lead lap in eighth. Good run for that bunch, the Bill Davis team. After the disappointments of Daytona that we documented earlier. Casey's coming. The battle middle of the pack, Bodine the 66, Blaney the 93, Fidoa the 36 on the outside, and Jeffrey Whoa. Bodine. Good the drive in there by Jason Jarrett also. He was all the way down on the flat and didn't lose control. That shows a lot of maturity. He hadn't been here before, but I tell you, he drove that car very well then. Mark Martin trying to dispose of Mike Dillon, who's a lap down in 15. And does. 98 is Elton Sawyer. He's on the lead lap. The boys, I know it's, we're watching some great racing, but Jeff Burton is checked out. Yeah, he's already <laughs> a second and a half ahead. That's why we're watching all of this battling here, middle of the pack. Ted Musgrave's in the 29 there. That's right. the same car that uh, Elliot Sadler drove last year. Two victory. Yeah. And there you see the spread, first on back, the LaJoy and the rest of the field. Burton's almost two mile an hour faster than uh, LaJoy is. 149.2 at, at, yeah. at this time. 147 flat the last time by. 22 laps to go. There is the leader now by two and three tenth seconds, Jeff Burton. Trying to take it to the house. We're back in a moment. Till 200, led by Jeff Burton. He is now three and a half seconds up on Randy LaJoy. There is the scramble for fourth place on your screen. Mark Martin, having made the move around Casey Atwood moments ago, battles McLaughlin and gets him as he sidesteps Phil Parsons as well. Yeah, Casey Atwood in the 27 right there, moving down on McLaughlin now. These guys have raced all day long. Everything that Mark Martin's done, Casey Atwood looks right like, yeah. like a shadow. Yeah, yeah. he is. That was a pretty gutsy move Mark made going into three over there too with Phil Parsons in the, mid in the middle of the pack here. Let's check in quickly with Ralph. Well, this is a really good car for Mark Martin. He lines a brand new race car. When they got here, after just two laps of practice, they were unofficially under the track record. They fell right off the bat. If this wasn't a very dominant car, you just got to wonder. Remember, they lost four spots under that pit stop under caution. This backstretch really has hurt Mark Martin there. And I got to tell you, Eli, NASCAR works so hard to make everything equal. Parity, that's all we hear about. Why would we have a racetrack where you have to penalize guys for pitting on the opposite side of the racetrack? There's no excuse for that in 1999. And if we're seeing now tracks like uh, Martinsville, making uh, the extension front they're, straightaway pit now. It, it's, you got to have, you, you got to give everybody a fair chance. And that is just, that's handicapping the guy so bad. Well, they're just bad facts. The biggest thing is the sweep getting in there. You just can't get in the back straightaway as fast as a green flag stops. And then that caution, of course, the guys are stopped over here are working on their car before you ever get in the pit. Well, not only that, there's 
31 pits over here, so there's a 43 car field. That means that how many cars are on the other side? So you don't have that many cars going in and out of that pit over there like you do over here. On the racetrack right now, though, Jeff Burton not worried about what's going on and anything except in front of him now. He's got three and a half seconds of a lead on Randy LaJoy. He'll go around Bobby Hillen in the clean shower car. Remember we talked at the very beginning of the show, Burton and Martin starting in the back. It'll be something to watch them come to the front. Looking for Randy LaJoy, three and seven, ten seconds back to the number one with Kenseth and Martin behind him. And I mean right behind him, too. As you see LaJoy there, the back of the car is not tracking quite as well as the front now. He's getting just a little bit loose getting in the corner, so, hey, this thing's not over by a long shot. Second place, a good scramble still. Look at Mark oh, Martin. Yeah. Boy, I thought he, he saw an opening. Yeah. In the middle part of the corner, Mark Martin's car is like a rock. Well, LaJoy checked up just a little bit. Kenson had to back off a little bit. Mark almost had a run on both of them. LaJoy on board, looking back towards Kenson. And now Martin tries the high side if they can pull it off. Yeah, he's got the spot going down into the corner there. You can see visibility beginning to be a problem getting into turn one. It always has been that way, Dark. Oh, yeah, here, it, here it's rocking him. You're looking right dead in that sun going into turn one. You know, I, I, that car has to be really, really good for Mark Martin because I haven't seen him pass very many people in the years I've watched him race on the outside. He usually is right around the white line. All of this now is three and seven ten seconds behind Jeff Burton, who has never finished better than fourth here at Rockingham in a NASCAR Push Series race. Oh, oh Casey Atwood place. got sideways there and hit the 34 of McLaughlin. Well, McLaughlin really pinned him down getting in there. He wasn't giving him very much room, and <laughs> Casey just took it on in there. Well, right now, what Casey has to worry about is losing the back end going in the corner. You can see right now he gets a good drive up out of the corner, though, and makes the move. Boy, this kid's good. Yeah, he is. He is good. He, is, he has a lot of skill. It takes a lot of car control to be able to do what he just did. Speaking of which, look at this battle, Eli. Second place. See, Mark just showed the uh, kids that uh, you want to pass that cat, go around on the outside. Matter of fact, I might be able to pass him up. Yeah, he might have introduced him to Whoa. something that's going to give him Oh, look trouble. what he had. Look, Mark had to block him. Yeah. This could get big right here. <laughs> This could get exciting because this is three guys right here that all don't know the word quit. And this is for second, folks. Remember, they're four seconds behind the leader, Jeff Burton. But Jeff's just cruising. That's why we're watching this for you. Look at the drive that Kenseth gets good, getting in the turn there in turn three. He's right on by the joy. Right now, though, he's paying the price for going up high. But he oh, yeah, but he's got that momentum. When you get up there like that, he's got that momentum off the corner. And he might just go back up there and get Mark. Look at this. Well, Mark introduced him to that move, but uh, Mark Martin seems to have good drives up out of the front. Well, Mark's been real good at one and two all afternoon. And uh, some of the guys are a little better than he is at three and four. Whoa now. Whoa, whoa. Easy. <laughs> woo. LaJoy. LaJoy had that bumper right up against the back of him. They may or may not catch Larry Pearson. About 100 yards ahead of them. You can just see him in the top of the windshield view. Boy, if Kansas don't get some room between him and LaJoy, that could be a problem there. LaJoy is wearing him out. Right in the center of the corner. Randy LaJoy, I mean, if it loosens you up, he's giving him... Look at the sign getting into turn one. We were talking right, just right there. It's almost a blind spot getting into turn one. Near the corner, there's Pearson to the outside, you see, giving him some racing room. The double zero. Jeff Burton still 3.2 seconds ahead of the scramble. There he is. If it was Sunday, he'd be on the Sunday ride, wouldn't he, buddy? Yeah, he would, but Mark Martin's turned it up a little bit himself. Now, right now, the teammates tomorrow, Burton leads in second place. Mark Martin, these guys are really flying. And Kenseth is also a member of some of that team stuff, too. You know, he's involved with Roush. So, uh, having a pretty good day here. They've got a Roush going on. Just ahead of LaJoy. White flag is in the air. Last time to do, to do it for Jeff Burton now. Zeroing in on his 10th career victory in the NASCAR Push Series. The fifth on a super speedway. He started in 30th, Burton did. 
not the farthest back for a winner. Steve Grissom started back in 32nd in 1990. But those numbers don't matter to Burton. He likes the numbers he's going to see. In victory lane, Jeff Burton wins. Mark, then Kenson, then LaJoy, Atwood, and McLaughlin in that order. That's your top six. Elton Sawyer, seventh unofficially. Jeffrey Bodine, eighth. Todd Bodine, ninth. Tim Fidoa will finish 10th, then Blaney 11th, and Purvis 12th. Those 12 drivers on the lead lap at the day's conclusion. Jeff Burton wins. His first Rockingham win in his 14th race. We'll hear from him when we come back. Daryl Walchip, I know you got to run and get ready for final NASCAR Winston Cup practice. Thanks for your time today. Always a pleasure. No, it's a great race. Fun to watch, and I'm proud of Casey Atwood. He did a great job today, and of course, congratulations to the winner there. He did a pretty good job himself. He did. You do well tomorrow. Thanks, Keep guys. Keep the dark side down, man. That's right. Keep All it right. low. Keep uh -huh. it low. Larry Mack Reynolds, have a good day tomorrow yourself, sir. Thanks for your time today. Oh, I appreciate it, guys. I always enjoy working with you and looking forward to starting seventh tomorrow. And I tell you, I'm looking forward to doing work for the fifth year, going into five years with TNN. I've enjoyed every minute of it, Eli. We are tickled to have you. Here's Jeff Burton. He came off the racetrack. He's starting to celebrate his first ever win at Rockingham. And then he says, my God, I'm lost. I, I'm lost. <laughs> I don't know where Victory Lane is. Watch this. He starts backing up. Where's, where's Victory Lane? Glenn, I guess they finally directed him there, huh? <laughs> yeah, he finally <laughs> made it. Jeff finally comes out of that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Getting congratulations for the crew. Oh, he was going to down some hill. Wait a minute. Come on down here. Now, the first thing, we were poking a little fun at you there. Couldn't find Victory Lane. Well, they always remember you for the things you can't do well, not the things you can do well. But, uh... That's just because we've never won here before. Uh, real proud track here, guys. This is the car that uh, the first lap at Homestead in practice, I drove in the wall when we had to put a right side frame rail, rear clip, a front snout. Totally redid the car, so I'm awfully proud of those guys bringing this car after doing all that work and uh, and being able to build it to, to be as competitive as it was. Looked like it was awfully good all day. Did you have to adjust it much during the race? Did the track change a lot? Well, we did. We kept getting tight. Uh, we were really tight the last run, and, and you know, if the 60 car would have been in the right position, he would have made it hard on us. Uh, the longer I ran, the tighter I got. We kept freeing it up, kept freeing it up, but I never did get it freed up enough, and I saw a lot of people with the same problem, so uh, I don't know if it's, if it's because it's so cool or what it is but it's awfully tight did you learn some things from maybe tomorrow it's going to be even cooler then well i hope so uh you know the, the bush cars have a quite a bit less horsepower and and than than a winston cup car so you really have to take that into account there's a shorter wheelbase in the bush car uh if 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 the xi car run as good as the track gear car we're going to be awfully happy with it though I'd say he's exactly right. Great job by Jeff Burton and all his crew. Back top side. A super run for him. As he said, his 10th NASCAR Bush Series win, the fifth on the big tracks. He led 71 laps today en route to the victory. Jeff Burton takes the win. More coming up in just a moment. Triple North Carolina Speedway. Boy, how it has grown up over the years. A magnificent track under the leadership of Joe Wilson. Hope you've had a chance to visit NASCAR Thunder, the official store of NASCAR. And if you've been there before, you know what it's all about. So go on back and visit once more. Brett Bodine is going to be appearing at the NASCAR Thunder store in Dallas, Texas at the Vista Ridge Mall on Friday, March the 26th. He'll be there from 7 until 9 o'clock local time. So check it out when Brett is there. And also, folks, Remember again this year, NASCAR Online, your 24-hour NASCAR garage pass. You probably know that computer address by now, www.nascar.com. Check it out as we all do as we try and keep up with the different divisions of NASCAR. NASCAR Online. Time now for our AutoZone Tech Fact. Here is our own techie, Glenn Jarrett. <laughs> Kindest thing you've ever said about me, Eli. Since this is the first race of the season on TNN, I want to show you some of the things that the uh, crews do that are going to be running all the races and hopefully high up in the championship points. Take a look to my left here. This is what we call a crash cart. Now, this thing has everything on it. If you get involved in a crash on the racetrack, try and rebuild a car. Extra oil tank. We saw Dale Earnhardt Jr. have a radiator problem. Got a spare radiator on there. In the back back there, an acetylene torch to cut things off. Got a welder right here to weld them back on. Spare battery. Upper, uh, you got lower A-frames here, control components. This is where the springs fit. You got tie rod ends, uh, drag links. 
You got complete wheel assemblies, everything you need to put that race car back together. But you know what the most important thing about the crash cart is? It's a place for the teams to keep their pretty girls, give them a place to watch the race from. <laughs> <laughs> ah, facts that you never knew coming to you courtesy of Glenn Jarrett. When we come back, we'll wrap things up, a full rundown, maybe a chance to chat with some of the other drivers in today's event as Jeff Burton picks up his 10th career Bush Series win on TNN Motorsports. Don't forget to find out the latest news in the garage area before they drop the green with the uh, Duralu Big Kmart 400 preview show. It comes your way at noon Eastern. Race coverage starting at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon, all right here on TNN Motorsports. There you see the numbers. We'll take you all the way back through. And again, you've got to be impressed with Randy LaJoy. Two weeks in a row now, a win and a fourth place finish. Great run for Casey Atwood. Dave Blaney after the rocky start with a strong yeah, 11. Yeah, good, good finish for him in 11th spot. Mike Stefanik soldiered along all day in the 05 car and ended up 22nd. And there you see the remainder of the field, including uh, Mike Swain Jr. in for Andy Santer, and then Gibbs, Fuller, and Kerry Earnhardt rounding out the 43 cars. Mark Martin came home second. There he is, 13 top fives, Glenn, in his last 17 Bush Series races. He's got an incredible record here at, uh, at Rockingham. And Mark, the thing that i got to ask you, though, is, boy, pitting on that backstretch is really a disadvantage. Well, that took a, you know, that kind of took our chance away there, but... Jeff Burton was really, really strong, and he's uh, been awesome here at Rockingham for a while. So uh, it was a good run for the Winn-Dixie team. They had that Taurus ride on the last setup, uh, last set of tires. We really had it hooked up. Best it was, for sure, the whole race, and it was a good run for us. It certainly was, and if Jeff Burton has had a great record coming from this guy, wow, he is good. Indeed so. Mark Martin with a solid run here again today. Comes home second. Of course, Mark will start fifth tomorrow, and Burton will start second. Well, we had our share of carnage today, no doubt about that. A lot of problems over the course of the afternoon, but when all was said and done, Jeff Burton pulls away. Average speed of 101.958 miles an hour. Tomorrow, the NASCAR Winston Cup teams here at Rocky Ricky Rudd on the uh, Bud Pole, Jeff Burton, Jeff Gordon, Jeremy Mayfield, and Mark Martin. That is the top five for tomorrow. Coverage starts at noon with the pre-race show and then 12.30 for the green flag. Hope you've enjoyed our coverage today from the North Carolina Speedway. Thanks to Glenn Jarrett, Larry McReynolds, Ralph Shaheen. Of course, up here in the booth, Darrell Waltrip and Buddy Baker alongside. I'm Eli Gold. Thanks so much for joining us as we open up the 1999 season on TNN Motorsports. Tomorrow, coverage at noon and the green flag at 12.30. But for today, the spoils belong to that man, Jeff Burton, as we say so long from Rockingham. Motor Speedway.